Hi, I am once again attempting to make a return to YouTube. I'm gonna talk about that for a couple minutes and what the future of my channel is gonna look like, but if you don't care about that and you just wanna get to the meat of the video, then the timestamp is here. So, I have been wanting to return to YouTube for a minute now. Um, I just have more time to do it now. You know, I'm not in school anymore. Uh, I kind of have a handle on my business and how I want to run things and everything. And so I filmed a video a while back where I went into this really uh, in-depth story of my office and my altar spaces. And I gave you like the whole tour of this room that I'm in right now and went really in-depth with what each object on each of my altars means and how I run my business out of this room and yada yada yada. It was this big 35 minute video. I had edited it, I added music to it, and I thought this is going to be a spectacular way to return to YouTube. And then I lost the file. That was a bad day. Uh, and so I'm like, you know, I'll just put this off for a little while longer. It's fine. I'm fine. I was not fine. I was very upset. But it's been a few weeks and I figure I'm ready to try again. I'm not gonna do the office tour thing right away. I'll do it again at some point eventually, probably like re go really in depth with my altars and everything. Um, I just do not have the energy to try and do that again right now though. So that's why today is gonna be a um, what I wish I knew at the beginning of my practice type video because no one's done that before, but I'm back on YouTube. I can't promise to have a regular updating schedule because the bulk of my following is on TikTok and I do run a business and I do readings on live and you know, I, I gotta do what I gotta do to pay the bills, you know, and hopefully at some point YouTube will start doing that too. Not that I'm just in this for the money, but you know, I gotta make rent. So those are gonna be the priority, but hopefully, you know, once every couple weeks, I'll be able to film a video for you guys and put it onto YouTube. I've also just had a lot of writer's block as to what I want my YouTube channel to be because I have a podcast where I talk about a lot of different things. If you've never listened to my podcast, link is in the description, go listen to it. It's cool, it's fun. But, you know, I talk about things on the podcast that a lot of people might talk about on their YouTube channel. So I'm like, man, what do I want my YouTube channel to be? And so I've settled on a couple things. One, things that are maybe too long for TikTok, but too short for my podcast, because my podcast is usually about a half hour long each episode, give or take. Um, and so I could use YouTube for things that are like 15 minutes worth of discussion, you know? Um, I also want to do like tutorial based things, maybe um, spell walkthroughs that are <clears throat> maybe a little bit more in depth from what I could do on TikTok. And I also, I think it would be fun to do like attempting kitchen witchery. I say attempt because I am nowhere near expert level with cooking. Um, I know how to open a can, which as a left-handed person says a lot, but that's about the extent of my cooking um, ability. So I just think that that would be funny to not only be able to like give you guys a recipe that you can follow and hopefully do better than me, uh, but to watch me hilariously fail as I attempt to cook things. So that's an idea that I have too. Like I said, I can't promise a concrete updating schedule, so I'm not about to say like, oh yeah, every Wednesday, every Friday. I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm just gonna pull a Dan and Phil and I'll upload when I upload and it'll be a nice surprise whenever I do. And hopefully I won't uh, feel the need to take another year long hiatus. This leads me to what I actually want to talk about in today's video. And like I said, today is gonna be a video that literally everyone else has done, but it is a handful of things that I wish I knew before I really dove into witchcraft. Now, when people ask me, so how long have you been practicing? That's a really hard question for me to answer because I've been doing things that people would consider witchy since childhood 
Um, and I dabbled in it a little bit in like middle school and high school because I had a friend who was a witch. Uh, but I've only taken on the title of witch in the last two years, if that makes sense. So I've been doing it for longer than that, but I've only really embraced the title of witch for a couple years now, if that makes sense. So this is what I wish I knew before I really took on that title. The first thing I wish I knew is how many day-to-day -day things are considered witchcraft. Uh, things like knocking on wood, blowing out birthday candles, flipping a coin. I feel like if I had known those things, I could have embraced this title and this way of life a lot sooner had I known how many mundane and day-to-day -day life things are considered witchcraft. And something else that was considered day-to-day -day for me was angels and demons because I grew up in a church that believed in people who could see, you know, angels and demons and even communicate with them, which is something that I was able to do from a very young age. And I, I touched on this a little bit in my How I Became a Christian Witch video. I think that's the first video that I ever uploaded to YouTube. Um, I touched on that a bit, but that's just the church environment that I grew up in. I was encouraged to embrace my gift and my ability to talk to angels and demons which some would argue is very witchy or very psychic-y or, um, but that was just a day-to-day -day thing for me. And so again, if I had known how witchy that was, uh, maybe I would have pursued that a little bit stronger in my middle school and teen years. Another day-to-day -day thing for me was prayer, obviously, because I grew up Christian, but I was always told in every church I've ever been to, to pray like it's already yours. So don't say, you know, Jesus, please give me this new house. Say, Jesus, thank you for this new house that I'm gonna have, you know, that kind of thing. That's manifestation. This everyday thing for me was absolutely partaking in what witches would call manifestation. And so I just think if I would have known those things, I would have embraced this a lot sooner uh, and maybe heightened some of those talents a little bit more as I aged. The second thing that I wish I knew before partaking in witchcraft is how much research there is. I figured there'd be a little bit, but you know, there's still so much that I don't know. And I feel like I've done a decent job at educating myself. I've read more books than I can count, especially over the pandemic when all anyone was really able to do was read. I think I read 20 books in six months over the course of the pandemic. But, you know, people could be partaking in witchcraft for 30 years and still learn new things every day. The research never stops. The learning never stops. And that can seem really overwhelming because there's so much knowledge and there's so much that I want to know and there's so much that I want to learn about still and it can get overwhelming so you know I would definitely tell my younger self don't push it just take your time just go at your own pace embrace what comes to you and there's also a lot of learning that comes with experience as well in witchcraft right but there are mountains of research. That's why, you know, people teach witchcraft classes. If you're in a pretty liberal town, you could even take college courses on it, right? Because there's so much to learn and so much to unpack. The third thing that I wish I knew when I was entering my craft is that you can do whatever you want within reason, right? I definitely associate with chaos magic, this idea that you know, you don't need the perfect tools. There's not necessarily a right or wrong, again, within reason. Um, but I am the worst mentor for this reason now because people will be like, they'll message me and be like, did I do this spell right? And I'll be like, do you think you did it right? Well, I didn't have a green candle, so I had to use a yellow one, okay? And? But 
but did I do it? Do you think you did? I am the worst <laughs> with this because I'm like, you could do whatever you want. The yellow candle is going to work fine if you don't have the green candle. You can use a rock that you found outside instead of using a crystal. You can do whatever you want. But some people really thrive on a strict set of rules, following the instructions line by line, ingredient by ingredient. I don't operate that way. I change up spells all the time. I change the recipes. I don't have rosemary. Okay, I can still do this spell. Like, not everyone functions that way, but it is what I have found to be best for my practice because when I was younger, I'd be like, oh no, I don't have one of these 12 ingredients. Guess I can't do the spell. Yes, you can. But I didn't know that when I was first starting out. It's okay though, I, I know now and it's, it's much better. Next thing I wish I knew is how different other deities are from Yeshua or Jesus. Um, but this is something that makes Yeshua unique. Um, I, again, grew up in a church background where we were encouraged to be friends with Jesus. Just talk to him like you would talk to anyone else. Talk to him like you're talking to a friend. That is how I grew up. It was very informal. And you can have that relationship with him you know, that's fine, but other deities are not like that. And that was a difficult adjustment for me to get used to having a more formal relationship with other deities. And once you work with a deity for a long enough time, you give or take, depending, can develop a friendlier relationship with them but it's not going to be the same as the christian relationship with jesus that we are typically raised with and so that was a struggle for me at first but again that's what makes yeshua unique that you can develop this friendship like relationship with him every deity is unique that's something that makes him unique now i can't speak for people who are god spoused um that is something that I really don't know a ton about, but their relationship with deities probably look a lot different. And while I said, you know, you can develop friendlier relationships with deities, it's still going to be a lot more formal. Um, and, you know, they care about you, but there's some debate over whether or not the pagan gods love their human, you know, it's this whole thing right? It's not going to be the same as working with Yeshua. That doesn't make it bad. I'm not trying to discourage anyone from deity work. Deity work is a lot of fun and I love working with the deities that I work with. It's just something to keep in mind because it was an adjustment for me. Next, I wish I would have realized how much my family hated witchcraft. Um, I think I expected my family to kind of bitch and moan and not really like it. Um, but I really didn't know that they would go through my room and destroy my things and yell and scream at me and my boyfriend and kick me out. That's a whole thing. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I made a whole playlist about it on TikTok. It's under my unfortunate events playlist. Um, I can honestly say that I did not know that that would happen. When I first started my TikTok, I wore a mask so that my face wouldn't be revealed. Um, I did try to hide, I didn't say my name, you know, just, but that was more so to prevent conflict and to prevent arguments. You know, I really didn't think that it would go that far. And I think that, um, while I don't believe that that situation was my fault in any way, shape, or form, had I known that that could happen, I definitely would have been a lot more careful with how I said certain things, where I placed certain items. I definitely would have been a lot more strict in my broom closetness. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, and everything that happened led me to where I am now and I'm living a pretty great life now. So, I don't know, I guess it's okay. And finally, something that I wish I knew was that it's okay to feel stuck. Um, 
I remember there were a couple times where I didn't feel as in touch with my practice or I didn't feel as connected to my deities or I'd go like a week without doing a spell and I felt like I was doing a bad job or you know I was prioritizing the mundane over the magical and not having a good balance and none of that is true. It's okay to feel stuck in your practice. It's okay to just not be vibing with what's going on. That is more than okay because we're only human and humans have limits and spell work takes a lot of energy. Witchcraft in general takes a lot of energy. Um, I do try to, you know, at bare minimum, light my deity's candles every day, say hello to them, but you know, there's times where I forget an offering or there's times where I don't really feel that connection or, you know, I just don't feel very um, in tune, I guess would be the word. That's okay. It happens all the time. Burnout in the craft is normal. And typically just what you have to do is, you know, just let yourself rest, let your mind reset, let yourself regroup and eventually it'll come back as normal and you just kind of restart when you're ready. A big thing in witchcraft is prioritizing your mental health and if you find that your craft is being detrimental to your mental health, that's certainly not what you want. So it is perfectly okay to take a break, to feel stuck and let yourself be stuck so that you can learn to get out of it in your own way and on your own time. So yeah, that was definitely longer than a TikTok and shorter than my podcast. So th it makes a lot of sense. I think YouTube is gonna be a good platform for this kind of thing. So like I said, there's not gonna be a regular update schedule. I will just kind of upload when I upload. Uh, maybe I'll make it a thing on Patreon where certain patrons get access to YouTube videos early. Um, I don't know, I'll think about that. But. Check the description to find my TikTok and all my social medias. Please subscribe to my Patreon. Um, we're having a lot of fun on there, not to brag, but I think my Patreon is pretty cool. Check out my store with all of my items and things that you can buy. You can get a candle, you can get jewelry, you can get a mystery box. Like the possibilities are really kind of endless. So. Make sure you check all of those things out and subscribe to see where this YouTube journey goes. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Let me know what you think and hopefully I can get this channel figured out. But in the meantime, I'll see you next time. Bye.